Today on the Tesla Hobo channel, we're going to do a tutorial for autopilot. Tesla puts a lot of high-end tech that's sometimes gimmicky in their cars, but then they don't really go into explanations as to how to use it. So today we're going to take this 2015 Tesla Model S P90D with Ludacris. It's equipped with autopilot 1.0. So it has adaptive cruise control, auto steer, and its auto steer has the ability to automatically change lanes for you when you're using the turn signal. It's not like the newer cars that can actually, on its own, it will change lanes. This is the, the user input. I turn the turn signal and the car turns. So I'm doing this tutorial because, well, there is an owner's manual that will tell you how to use autopilot, but it takes a while to load it. I've actually had the update in this car to put the larger RAM in, and still, things take quite a while to actually load. This is millions of times better than how it was prior to the to the update. Uh, before the recall was done, this would have never loaded at all. It would have just been a spinning wheel. But we don't have enough time to sit here and wait for things to load. So I'm going to go into it and start it off. So the first thing we need to do, if you're a complete new driver to the car, is you want to go to autopilot. And you want to make sure that auto steer is set on. If that's set off, the only option you're going to get is Distronic Cruise Control, and you will not be able to get the car to, to drive and turn in the lanes for you. Second thing that's very important is the speed limit here. Uh, I have it set on relative. So what relative does is whatever speed you put in here, when you activate autopilot, whether it's auto steer or, or just the Distronic, it will set it for that speed above the speed limit. You could also put it to absolute, and that'll just be a specific speed that it sets it to. Now, to get into actually using the auto steer, and one thing that's very important with this too, before I know it is, if you have this set for eight miles an hour above the speed limit, and you're beginning, be very careful. If you're going 35 miles an hour on a road that has a speed limit of 55 or 60, as soon as you activate autopilot, the car is going to want to accelerate to eight miles an hour over the speed limit, the car will start accelerating. So make sure that when you're setting it, that you, you are aware of what speed it's going to set it at. Uh, you could see those things up here on the screen. It'll tell you while you're driving what the max speed is. So here, here is the stock. For the beginner, the basic buttons you need to know. Most important, how to deactivate adaptive cruise control or auto steer. This button, you press that in that will deactivate both of them if you push the stock back that will deactivate both of them if you press the brake that will deactivate both of them now one that i don't like doing is if auto steer is enabled and you pull the wheel a little bit that will deactivate auto steer only so as a beginner be warned when you do it that way adaptive cruise control will still be on. I only like to deactivate auto steer this way if I'm forcing the car to change the lanes and then I immediately double tap to initiate auto steer again. So that brings me to the next point, how to activate these. So adaptive cruise control, there are multiple ways to turn it on. First way is a single pull forward that will set the adaptive cruise control for whatever the speed limit speed is that you wanted. So that's where I'm saying, even if you're going 20 under the speed limit, you pull that in, it's gonna set it, in my case, to eight miles an hour above the speed limit. Uh, second way to, second and third way, to turn on adaptive cruise control is to either press this down or up. When you do that down or up, it will only set it to the exact speed that you're going. And then the last part is if you double tap forward, that will set autopilot and auto steer. If you already have autopilot on, still you need to double tap it to turn on the auto steer. So now on top of that, we'll go back to these. So that's, that's pretty much what the beginners need to know. They need to know how to deactivate it, how to activate it. Now to go a little bit more into using a little bit more of the car, we'll do the next part, which is this knob, when you twist it. When you twist this knob, if you twist it forward, you'll see this number up here gets smaller. Or if you twist it back, 
it gets higher. This is how close you want the car to follow the cars in front of you for Distronic Cruise Control. I like keeping it set all the way in the front on one for most of the time, except when you're in heavy traffic. I like putting it all the way back to seven because the car seems a little bit smoother with how it's gonna slow down and accelerate when it's all the way to the back. So now that you have the distance covered, we'll go a little bit more in depth, a little bit past that, which is going to be changing the speed of the adaptive cruise control while it's set. So the same thing that up or down will activate Distronic, if you press it up while it's activated, that will go up by one mile an hour. Now, if you do a hard press, where you kind of feel that double click, that will go up by five miles an hour. Now, likewise, if you go down, that will decelerate by one mile an hour. If you hard press down, it will decelerate by five miles an hour. Keep in mind when setting your max speed that if it's already following a car, the car is not going to accelerate. It's only going to accelerate once it's open and clear. The max ever speed that you could set your adaptive cruise control for is 90 miles an hour. And sometimes if the car senses that you're on a road that has either street lights or pedestrians on the side of the road, it will actually limit you to only five miles an hour over the speed limit. And now the, the last part, it's a little bit more of, of intermediate to advanced. You can't really see it well because we're not driving yet, but I'm gonna continue this video while it's driving is actually using the turn signal. So if you have auto steer set and you wanna change lanes, you can actually turn on the blinker. And if you turn on the blinker, it can change lanes for you. Now it won't always change lanes for you, but I'll go into that more in depth while we're actually driving. And that's really the time where I sometimes cancel auto steer by pulling because I have the lane change on, it's not automatically changing lanes. I don't wanna sit behind this slow car forever. So I just grab the wheel, tug it, change lanes, and then I reset auto steer. So just a little bit, once we're done charging, we're at 75%, so it's not that much longer. I will show you how to actually use these in practice. Tesla Hobo here, we're back for the driving portion of the autopilot tutorial. We're getting on the interstate now. And I wanted to show you guys the things that we couldn't while we we're supercharging. So to start with, I'll set the automatic cruise control with the auto steer and that will make it a lot easier for me to point out a lot of things to you here in the car. So I'm gonna get all the way over, get into the drive lanes, get at a decent speed and go. So as you first might have noticed already, the relative speed control set it automatically at 78 miles an hour. Um, it said that the speed limit was 70, eight over, that's 78. Um, when you have this number here with the blue circle, that means that autopilot adaptive is set. The number in the middle is the maximum speed. Uh, to the left is whether or not auto steer is on. If it's blue, auto steer is on. If it's gray, auto steer is ready but not activated and if there is no icon there at all the car can't read the lanes yet so it's not going to give you the ability to have auto steer uh, once you do turn auto steer on you will see these blue lines here that means that it recognizes where the lanes are and once the blue line is set it will allow you to automatically change lanes so let's do that really quick if i put the left blinker on the car automatically changes the lane. It gets a dotted line and then it will allow you to change lanes. Then once it's solid again, it means you're in the lane. I'm gonna go through what I said earlier. If you do a single tap up, the speed increases by one mile an hour. If you do a hard tap, it goes up by increments. Oh, it will not even let me set it because it senses that the car is, slow, is slowing down for traffic. So it's, it's making me pause as I'm setting the speed higher. As you see here, cars are getting in front of me, automatically decelerating to a safe distance. So I'm gonna do show you when you put the stock down, it goes down by one mile an hour. Hard presses, five mile an hour increments. So 80, 75, 70. So even if you're in the middle, if you're at 72, it's not gonna go up by five miles an hour. It's gonna go up to the next 
five mile an hour increment. Also, as stated earlier, the max speed is 90 miles an hour. I could tap up as many times as I want. It will not go over 90. If the car senses street lights or pedestrians, it will actually limit it to only five miles an hour over the speed limit. I won't even let you get to 90. So more of the things that I was showing you before, I'm gonna show you deactivating auto steer. Let's say I wanna be in the right lane, the car is not changing lanes. I'm going to, here we go, watch, I will put the blinker on. And it doesn't turn dotted. So it's not changing lanes because it realizes there's no safe distance yet for the car to get into this lane. But let's say I wanna just override it anyway and I want it to go faster than when I wanna wait. I grab the wheel, I take the wheel, it is now deactivated auto steer, I can now turn into the lane, but note that autopilot Distronic is still on. That's why I always double tap to re-enable auto steer so I don't forget that Distronic is on because that could be very dangerous if the car is accelerating when you think it should be slowing down. Now what I'm gonna do is, is frowned upon, I'm gonna intentionally keep my hand off of the steering wheel just to show you that Tesla will give you a warning. You have to keep a little bit of pressure on the wheel or the car will eventually start to yell at you. Um, depending on what kind of traffic you're in, uh, what speeds you're going, this could be sometimes minutes, it could be as little as 30 seconds. See, there's a sign, it's saying put your hands on the wheel, white little line, put your hands on the wheel. It's just flashing, but if I don't put my hands on the wheel, it's gonna start to audible yell at me. So I'm gonna intentionally not put my hand, the flashing's getting faster and faster. And then it did a little beep beep. So if you don't, after it gives you that warning, if you don't put your hands back on the steering wheel, it will deactivate cruise control and you will not be able to use it for the rest of your ride. So I'm gonna show you again here. I'm gonna keep my hands off the wheel so that you could see that warning once again. The first warning is just visual. It will be a white flashing bar at the top and a little note on the bottom saying, put your hands on the wheel. If you don't do it with just the visual warning, then it does a little beep beep and the hands on the bottom turn red. And I won't show you yet what happens after that, but I will eventually at the end of this video show you what happens if you ignore everything. So there's the visual. Now the audible, so I'm gonna grab it and I'm gonna just put my hand on the wheel and I deactivate it. But really, if you just put your hand on it, it will be fine. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to show you what happens if you didn't put your hand back on the wheel or if the car feels that you're abusing autopilot and you're driving too fast. So I'm gonna make it cancel it by driving too fast. So as I said, speed limit max is 90. So I'm gonna intentionally accelerate over 90 miles an hour to show you the warning that the car will deactivate autopilot for the rest of your ride because it feels you're abusing autopilot. Now, if you saw that little red hand, that red hand, that's it. There's no icon here. It will not allow me to use auto steer for the rest of the drive because I accelerated too fast over 90 miles an hour. Um, also, if you weren't keeping your hands on the wheel, it will do this same function to you. Don't worry, you did not break your car. Uh, it's just not gonna let you use auto steer until you turn the car off, uh, or not really turn the car off. You have to pull over, put the car in park, and then after you put the car in park, you can put the car back and drive again, and it will allow you to use auto steer. So if you're on a really long drive and you don't wanna have to drive the next hour and a half without autopilot, you could just pull over to a safe area of the shoulder, put the car in park, and then put it back in drive, and auto steer will be enabled again. So till next time, uh, that is autopilot. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, put them in the comments section. And if I missed something, I will try to make another video that includes it in there. I will probably also be putting up a small video anyway just to show times where the adaptive cruise control will only go five miles an hour over because it realizes that you are on a road with street lights or pedestrians. I think there might even be other factors, 
but I'm not sure what all of them are, and Tesla doesn't really give you those factors. I think because they don't want you pushing the limits of knowing when and where, it's gonna automatically limit it for safety. They wanna just be able to control that safety themselves. Uh, probably because if people know what the things are, they'll try to find ways to fool the car to override that feature. For example, the keeping your hand on the steering wheel. You can go on Amazon, they buy a little weight that you mount right here on your steering wheel and that weight puts enough pressure on the steering wheel that the car will always think that you have your hand on the wheel. It's not recommended. If you do that and you actually do fall asleep, your car will just drive indefinitely until it just runs out of charge or it gets to a point where the car is confused with maybe a left-hand exit and it will drive you straight into a barrier. So don't try to overfull the autopilot. It's there for a reason. And hey, 90 miles an hour, that's enough. It wants you to put your hand on the wheel every 30 seconds to a minute, that's enough. You could still you know, do other things where you need to on the touch screen or something else and then still come back. You should always be attentive because at the end of the day, it is your responsibility and people have died and accidentally ran over pedestrians in autopilot. So at the end of the day, it is still your responsibility. Drive safe and drive within your, your limits. Thanks for watching the Tesla Hobo channel. For more tutorials, maintenance, repair, and performance videos of this Tesla and other performance cars and motorcycles, click subscribe.